Hey, this is Flume, and I'm about to answer the most requested live chat questions. Uh, big thanks to Romeo for having me on the show. Let's do it. Colin from Los Angeles. What's your favorite song on Skin and favorite one to produce or perform live? I think probably my favorite one to produce would have been uh, would have been Numb and Getting Colder, the one featuring Kuchka on Skin. I was trying to kind of combine pop music and experimental music, and I was trying to create some kind of medium somewhere in between. And I feel like on that particular track, I was able to kind of capture both elements. So that one's my favorite on Skin. Uh, my favorite one to perform. Probably right now it's probably Smoke and Retribution, with Vince and Kuchka. That was uh, that was cool to make, but I think um, it's got a really crazy energy when I play it out, and there's always people going crazy to it. So it's that's a good one. All right, next up we got Jackie from Clifton. Can you describe a real life situation, experience, or slash experience that inspired you to write a track off Skin? Yeah, there's actually a uh, kind of like an interlude song and it's towards the end of Skin and uh, it's called When Everything Was New. That particular song was inspired by basically as an adult, I don't feel like I experience things for the first time that often. So, you know, when I do, I, I really appreciate it. But that was that's me kind of missing that feeling and the nostalgia of that. I tried to kind of create a, uh, try to create the feeling of being a kid, going to the carnival or the fair for the first time, experiencing it and it being kind of scary, but also kind of crazy exciting at the same time. So that was the kind of feeling that I was trying to portray in that track. Sabrina from Melbourne. Why pink and purple for the album? I don't know, not really any reason in particular. I guess the first record was kind of pink and purple and uh, I worked with Jonathan Zawada for this record, for the album art. And he came back with a bunch of ideas and I, I guess I was just drawn to the pink and purple one. I don't know, I just, just like that combo. But I do feel like there's a lot of pink and purple stuff now under the Flume brand. So I think probably next record i'm going to branch out a little bit and you know maybe try some blues or greens <laughs> something different all right taylor from columbia where is the track from 22 seconds to 42 seconds on the skin lp preview you need to drop that uh that track is it's done it's in the bank uh, i'm playing it out at live shows at the moment and it's going down well uh, it just didn't fit on the record, so I think I'm probably going to put it out maybe like later this year or on the deluxe version, something like that. With, when I was writing this record, I actually did a lot of music and not everything made it onto the album. Some stuff, I felt like it was strong and I really liked it and I really wanted to put it all on there, but uh, it didn't really sound cohesive. Okay, next up, number... Six, Alicia from Tamworth. Is there any connection between the release of Some Minds and Skin, basically on the same date, a year apart? Is there some personal relevance or reasoning to that date, or just a coincidence? Well, it's a coincidence. Yep, there was no real plan behind that, but it's cool that people read into stuff like that. Yeah, it just, just happened that way. Uh, number seven, Max from London. What is your favorite album of all time and why? Ooh, that's a hard question. That's a really hard question. I've got favorite albums. I don't know, sometimes it changes as well. I think one of my all-time favorite records would be would be Gorillaz, uh, that record Demon Days. That was super influential for me. Uh, the Gorillas in general, actually, and Damon, Damon Albin in general is just 
I think he's a musical genius. Emma from Huntington Beach. When are you moving to Los Angeles? Well, I'm going to move to Los Angeles maybe at the end of next year. I mean, end of this year. Uh, I love home and, but like it's, it's just, it's kind of inconvenient living in the Southern Hemisphere and there's not as many people to work with, but you know, it's beautiful. So I'm never going to move forever from Sydney, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to LA. There's like a, I feel like there's a really good thing happening in LA at the moment. There's a lot of people doing cool stuff and it seems to be where everyone in music is these days. So it's good like that. Samantha from Westminster. What kind of environment do you like to be in when making music? Anything you have to have when making music? Well, that's a tricky question again. I mean, Ideally, you know, a studio is great to be in for writing music, but I also find it kind of difficult sometimes to write in the studio. I just, I, I like being out and about. A lot of my ideas will come from me, you know, maybe I'll, I'm in London right now. So like, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll go and get a coffee somewhere and bring the laptop and play around and write a bit of a beat there. Uh, or, you know, like a lot of the songs on the record, one of them, like the first track on the record, I finished that in Mexico. Um, some of it was done in Australia, some in LA, some in New York. So I like to kind of move around. I find it difficult to be in one place and work a lot. But, you know, it is always nice having... I think, you know what, my ideal place to do music would be in a forest somewhere with no walls, some awesome speakers, and just all my gear just there. No roof, just nature. Number 10, Raya from Avon. Avon. What do you think of the popular term Flumiverse? Flume basically being the center of the universe. Never heard of the term Flumiverse. I'm definitely not the center of the universe. <laughs> Number 11, <laughs> Lucas from South River. What equipment do you recommend for someone who is going to start producing music? P.S. Congrats on the new album. Thanks, Lucas. Uh, if I was going to recommend anything for anyone to start producing music, I mean, it's kind of a boring answer, but really just a copy of Ableton and a laptop, a couple of samples. I mean, it's cool to get lots of crazy stuff, but... You know, really, if you can just get your head around Ableton and get maybe one synthesizer and figure out how to use it, that's the most powerful setup there is. All right. Connor from Nashville. How much more flu music do we get blessed with this year? Any surprises? Yeah, there'll be surprises, but they wouldn't be surprises if I told you. There'll be more music this year. Leah from Milwaukee. What's your favorite junk food? Probably, ah oh man, I love Cheetos. Cheetos, cheese and bacon balls. Uh, I haven't found them in the States yet, but there's these, yeah, they're like little circle things of just pure bliss. They're addictive. Um, all right, number 14, Danny from Minneapolis. How would you pimp out your tour bus? Flames, fins, spinners, flames, that'd be cool. Down the side, a couple of decals, maybe a studio in the back. A shower, I know it doesn't sound like a big ask, but man, that's what gets me on tour buses, just not being able to shower whenever, so. Just a nice big shower one it's kind of like a waterfall so there's like a bit of you know just stand under there while the bus is moving maybe a spa as well that'd be cool in the back luke from washington counter-strike global offensive or call of duty <laughs> gotta be counter-strike yeah i've spent way too many hours of my life on that thing i actually <laughs> i actually 
have an apartment back in Sydney and it's got two bedrooms and I'm in one and I was going to build a studio in the other but I ended up getting convinced by my friend to uh, turn it into a little internet cafe so now there's four PCs, two on either wall with all matching screens and mouses and it's pretty much just for Counter-Strike have friends over, play games, have some beers it's, it's like a little man cave, it's a little nerd out it's good need that after being on the road. Amy from Lincoln, how much equipment do you have to lug around with you when you're on tour? Well, I used to just have a little bit of equipment. Uh, I had a, like an APC-40, a launch pad, and my laptop. Now, <laughs> yeah, it, was, it wasn't a lot. I could actually fit it in a, like a carry-on bag to the airport. I'd also put my clothes for the night in there too, so I'd, I'd get onto stage and have to set up my gear and, I, and I'd have like t-shirts falling out and I'd have all my cables in this little sports girl bag and it was just, it was a mess. But um, it's very different now. We've got a lot of gear. It's, I think we have, I think this tour for America, we're going to have two buses because there's lots more people now. Uh, and we're going to have, I think, two semi-trailers, like 18-wheeler trucks with just stuff, lights and gear. So, yeah, it's, it's a little bit bigger now. Torna from Knoxville. Torna, I think I'm pronouncing that right. How many texts do you send a day? How many texts do you send a day? Who do you text the most? God. Probably my tour manager, Justin. Texting him for stuff. Come on, Justin. Where's my stuff? Can you buy me this? <laughs> I annoy him a lot. All right. Oh, that's it. Cool. All right. Well, thanks again. Thanks to everybody who are uh, sending you questions. And um, big thanks to Romeo for having me on. Uh, cheers for the support. Peace.